Welcome back to Block TV. What do you really know about Gibraltar? The tiny UK enclave on the tip of Spain's southern coast is home to 30,000 permanent residents and oh so many monkeys who have actually met the Queen of England once. It feels and looks like a quaint British town with red phone boxes and proper English pubs. It is also the world's largest hub for gaming, regulating it under what it has described as fair and strict codes over a decade ago. It is now trying to do the same for the blockchain industry. So much so that it has established a blockchain exchange with a self-described agenda of becoming the world's first nationally digital asset marketplace and ecosystem. Now, all that said, the island's finance and gaming minister, the Honorable Albert Isola, does not necessarily believe in digital currency, but says the technology behind the cryptos is what is driving his push for blockchain regulation. In an in-depth interview, we had a chance to explore his regulation mantra and what's really behind it. Let's take a look. What has blockchain regulation done for Gibraltar? It's Gibraltar is not new to innovation. It's not uh, new to introducing and being brave in how we uh, uh, embrace uh, new business. Uh, and, and the philosophy is very simple. Uh, we want to uh, foster innovation in Gibraltar in a, safe, uh, in a safe way, in a regulated way, in a quality way. And we did this 25 years ago with online gaming, where we were the first jurisdiction to invite online firms. Uh, we are and continue to be the premier online gaming jurisdiction in the world. Um, we have 80% of the UK uh, online gaming business being booked through Gibraltar. Um, <clears throat> and the firms that are operating from here uh, are probably the largest in the world. Uh, and that's not a coincidence. It's, it's a framework that started 25 years ago, where we invited quality firms to come into a regulated space in a regulated environment, and where they had to have a real presence in Gibraltar. There was no question of brass plating through Gibraltar licensing. You had to have a real presence. And that's exactly what we've replicate, replicated in the blockchain space. Our, our DLT framework, uh, which came law on the 1st of January of 2018, uh, had those three uh, uh, driving forces in the back of our minds when we made that legislation. And so today we've got uh, probably around 20, 30 firms going through the application process of the regulator five of whom are now already licensed and operating from Gibraltar. Uh, and uh, with real presence, quality firms completely regulated. Does the downturn in the crypto market worry you in any way, shape or form? Look, we set out um, four years ago when we started working in this space to see our approach and what it should be. At that stage, we took the view that our focus should be on the um, technology, on the blockchain. Uh, as opposed to the cryptocurrencies themselves. And so our entire framework is based, and it's called the DLT uh, legislative framework. So our focus is very much on the technology and the blockchain. We have a huge amount of belief in where that is going to be going in the years to come. And so this is a piece of legislation designed to support the future development of the technology and to encourage innovation in that technology. The fact that many people move into areas to make money shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. And so the opportunities that arose in cryptocurrency uh, were there for all to see. Um, it was no surprise that the cryptocurrency had a boom and then a very strong downturn. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. But the work that is going on within the blockchain space continues apace. Um, so am I surprised by the downturn in cryptos? Honestly, no. Uh, it was pretty much obvious that it was going to happen. And anything that goes up slowly and in a sustainable way will continue to grow or drip or, or or drop uh, at a slow rate too, anything that goes up very fast is likely to come down very fast too. What are the specific challenges when you come to regulate a new technology like this? What we found in, in, in formulating the legislation was that you couldn't box this like you can box traditional financial services business. And so we did what we haven't done before, which is to give the regulator a fairly wide berth and some, some significant discretion into how they should apply. And therefore we went for the principles based uh, uh, regulatory framework, which enables a regulator to, to interpret that quite widely, because this technology moves and is moving at such a pace that you can't box it. And therefore, by giving the regulator the discretion, uh, uh, we gave them the ability to keep up to pace uh, with the movement of the technology and whatever direction that may go in. How much has Gibraltar made over the last year thanks to this legislation? I think it's way too early to gain uh, to, to measure the game uh, in quite in quite such terms. Uh, the fact that we've got over 30 firms in the application process 
is extremely encouraging. Um, the fact that we have five now licensed up and running with our offices in Gibraltar uh, is very encouraging. We didn't uh, become the gaming uh, jurisdiction of choice overnight. Um, I would say it took us 10 years to get there. Um, and I see we are patient. We want long-term, slow, sustainable growth. Uh, and that's how we like to do things. And so it's way too early to begin to measure up um, in, in pounds, shillings and pence. This is an investment for the future. Uh, this is an investment in innovation, in creating a new uh, sector for Gibraltar, which will provide benefits to lawyers, accountants, banks, and many other areas and people uh, uh, around the space. Can Gibraltar regulation set the standard for the world? Um, I would invite anyone to look at what we've done. And at the same time as I say that, I would invite anyone to give us their comments and consider ways in which we can do things better. Uh, we don't believe that what we've got is a definitive answer to blockchain regulation. We believe it's a fabulous uh, first attempt. Um, and we are prepared to learn, and uh, we will be watching what other jurisdictions do uh, in, 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 in order to ensure that we keep up to date with what is happening and ensure that what we are doing is relevant. We want our firms and our operators in Gibraltar to have the best regulatory framework available to them. And so... We will learn from others, absolutely, and we will look and keep a close eye as we are doing on what other jurisdictions are doing to ensure that we stay uh, current and up to date and at the forefront of blockchain regulation. And what makes blockchain such a promising technology? People have compared it to the internet 20 years ago. Um, and people had a fear of the internet and people didn't believe the internet. I mean, I, we've all read articles over the last 20 years about Nothing will put the newspaper down or nothing will, will, will compete with the book or nothing will compete with how information is garnered. We, know, we now know just the impact that the internet has had. Um, and the contrary, the thought of living without the internet now is just, you can't begin to fathom what impact that would have on our daily lives. I believe blockchain will have a similar impact over the next 10, 15 years. Thank you very much for being with us. Pleasure. Joining us now is Malcolm Pally, co-founder of Coincilium, an investment group that deals with early stage blockchain develop, uh, development. And Mr. Pally, first of all, thank you so much for being with us. Lovely to have you with us. And your company has a subsidiary, TerraStream, in Gibraltar since 2017. And back in the ICO, you know, boom days, I think we can both agree that those days are gone, um, but you know, it's still, it, it is a company that very much believes in Gibraltar or based itself in Gibraltar. How's it been going for it? Uh, well, TerraStream, just to clarify, is one of the projects that we set up in Gibraltar. That's um, just literally one of our activities. Uh, we're actually setting up a, a new company, which is going to really mirror what we've been doing in London and in the UK for quite a while. And that's going to be a, in Gibraltar, uh, providing advisory and uh, acceleration services and uh, various other things that we, we started doing in London. But we've since found that Gibraltar is a much more um, conducive, it offers us a much more conducive environment for um, for anything to do with blockchain technology and, um, and, and cryptocurrency. You're a big believer in blockchain. I want to ask you this because while speaking with the um, uh, Minister of Finance and Gaming of Gibraltar, clearly he does believe in the technology as well, but seems very adamant about, you know, not believing in the cryptocurrencies. Would you say that that's the case for you as well? Uh, sorry, I, I missed a little bit of that. You're saying that he doesn't believe in cryptocurrencies, believes in blockchain. Well, the, the technology is, he says, will last and that the, the, the currencies themselves are not that stable for the future. Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, what's the currencies have come out of the technology. It's not the other way around. They can't be separated. They're, they're sort of um, joined at the hip. Um, but the currencies, I think, really the, the, the takeaway point here is that, that they're... Um, they're kind of a life force that is, is very hard to control and manage, but the technology behind it is something that you can get your head around and understand. But I think the, as far as um, cryptocurrencies are concerned, they, they're kind of volatile, they're very volatile. And um, if you're sort of uh, involved in the trading of those, then um, you know, that's one side of the business, but the technology underpinning everything that goes on this in this sector, which is far beyond cryptocurrencies, um, is really what's interesting. No, that, that sounds um, like the um, mantra of many people we've spoken with. You've been described in, in the past as a barbarian investor. 
um, as well as you know, a very established entrepreneur. Why blockchain, Mr. Pally? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it came out of my, um, I, I've been a big gold investor for quite a while. I've uh, helped mining companies raise money and I've also been investing in mining and exploration companies. And uh, there was a sort of a, a, an analogy or there was a saying in gold, the gold space that was uh, referred to one of, by one of our previous um, chancellors, the exchequer as a barbarian relic or some words to that effect. So it sort of come out of that. And once I discovered Bitcoin, um, this was sort of showing signs of being uh, kind of digital gold. And that's something that a lot of people involved in in, uh, in this space consider um, Bitcoin to be, a digital representation uh, of gold because of its scarcity and uh, other characteristics. It's sort of made in the image of, of gold. But the technology is disruptive and barbarian, uh, the term barbarian, I suppose, is uh, um, I think kind of, of has way, uh, rings uh, true to anyone who um, believes in disruption. Disruption, not for the sake of it, but really you've got um, industries that have been going for quite a long time and then along comes a competitor that disrupts the market and uh, it's up to those who are in the incumbent industries not to be complacent. Um, change is coming from all directions. Often we don't even expect it. And uh, blockchain is it epitomizes this for me, and uh, it's just got it, it has the potential to change pretty much every industry on the planet. But with you know, just like Gibraltar, you know, you're clearly a believer in the disruption and and the ability of that technology. It has not seen that many you know mainstreaming user case applications. Do you think it's still a valid investment given? the volatility of the markets when it comes apropos currencies over the course of the last several weeks if not months yeah it's uh, there's no question uh, of its validity i think that there are mainstream applications you just don't see them and you're not uh, possibly not even going to see them you'll just use something that works and uh, you'll find out maybe later on it, it involved blockchain uh, at its core so that's not something we sort of dwell on um but on the same token the um no, not intended pun there, but um, it is the tokenization of assets and the tokenization uh, of um, you know various instruments and, and likewise the utility tokens which come out of the technology which which are uh, providing very efficient um, examples of very efficient ways of, of, of industries working. Mr. Pally, joining us from London, from Coin I want to thank you so much for being with us today. For all of you, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.